Hello everyone, my name is Devin Adams and I am a uh, Fortinet instructor at Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants and I record these videos for my participants who take my class and here I'm going to demo wildcard admin groups. So here I'm using the GNS configuration that I showed how to set up in later videos. So if you check out my playlist you can see how to create your own environment like this. But essentially this was a feature that was introduced in um, uh, 40 OS 5.6 had been around in like 40 Analyzer, 40 Manager for a while, and they finally implemented it in the newest 40 OS. So what's neat about this is that no longer do you have to make individual admin groups. Instead, you can go ahead and point to like a group container or an organizational unit using something like LDAP, and anyone that belongs to that group becomes a FortiGate admin. So uh, what's kind of nice about this is for one, you can create users in your uh, domain environment using AD and you don't have to make them separate on the FortiGates. You don't have to see their passwords, nothing like that. So, And then of course once they're terminated or once they go ahead and they move groups, uh, those permissions will instantly take. So it's advantageous uh, across the board. So um, let's go ahead and see what we're going to do in these videos. So first we're going to configure the AD groups themselves and we're going to do kind of like a, a challenge here for ourselves and we're going to do tier support. So essentially the whole idea here is that we have a security group that has different tiers. So tier one is going to have read only access to the FortiGate so they can look and not touch. And the whole idea behind this is to escalate it to like a tier two support which will have read write access. So we'll set that up on our domain controller here. So, and then uh, I split these videos up. The next video is going to be doing the LDAP bind itself on the FortiGates right here to the domain controller so we can go ahead and query the database or the, the directory services and um, essentially make the admin groups and point them to the wildcards. We also have to take it a step further there and make the different profiles for the read-only access. Not too bad. But our last video is going to be us testing it out. So we'll add a user like they're brand spanking new on the job and we will go ahead and see if they have access to the FortiGates and then we'll promote them and see if they have read-write access. So it should be a pretty good time here. So um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and begin by clicking our domain controller. And this is going to pop up on my other screen, but I'll, I'll drag it over. And this is just running Windows uh, Server 2012. Here we go. Wow, that's way too small. Just a second, guys. There we go. There we go. So let's go ahead and uh, make our accounts that we're going to use on the FortiGate itself. So we're going to go to our tools. And by the way, I apologize ahead of time. Uh, I'm doing all of this from a laptop. <laughs> so it's not the fastest thing in the world. But here we go, users and computers. And uh, for those that are familiar with um, uh, the Windows environment, this should look pretty you know, at home. So I'm just going to go ahead and make one OU here. And by the way, my, my, my students, Paul, in my class set up all this environment for me. So shout out to Paul there. But I'm going to go ahead and make an organizational unit just to kind of uh, keep everything together. So here we go. OU, and I'll just say FortiGates once it loads up. All right. So FortiGates. There we go. And uh, it is best practice, by the way, the bind that's done between the FortiGates and the domain controller really should be its own account. That way, when I get fired, right, I'm not using my credentials to go ahead and do the LDAP bind to the FortiGates. So I'm going to make the FortiGate 1 its own account, and it only needs to be an admin, or not an admin, I apologize. It only needs to be a um, domain user to go ahead and do that bind. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, let me go back to my domain controller. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new user here. And I'll just call this FortiGate1. Fortigate1. 
FortiGates 1, and this will actually be the FortiGates account for the bind. All right, give it a nice strong password. I doubt it you want it to expire. And this is what it's going to do to set up the LDAP connection. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is, is have two separate groups. So one group is going to be called uh, 40 admins 1. And this is going to be our tier 1 support group, right? And then we're going to make another group and we'll call it 40 admins 2. And that will be our tier 2 support. So. And then once we do that and we make a user, and I guess we'll just go ahead and do it right now. Um, in fact, we already have a user set up for us. Um, I believe here in tools, right? We'll just use Devin here. And I'll make him a part of that group. So I'll say he's a member of my tier one support just for fun. So 40 admins one. There we go. Just so we have someone to test out when we're when we're doing it. So so basically what we've done so far is make one group that says 40 admins 1, another group that says 40 admins 2, and then the FortiGate account itself that's going to do the LDAP bind. All right, so for right now, actually that's all we're going to do, and we are all ready to actually get on the FortiGate and start configuring it. So in the next video, we're going to configure the LDAP bind. And also what we need to do on the FortiGate to point these admin groups to the FortiGate. So once again, the whole idea here is to essentially um, have someone, you know, get hired, be placed in a group, and they instantly get access to the FortiGate based off of their support level. So when we return, we'll go ahead and go forward and play on the FortiGate. So thanks a lot, guys.